Let's open our Bibles. The book of Galatians chapter 4. This Galatians chapter 4. Verse 1. For the last couple of weeks we've been seeing about, you know, first we learned about obedience, discipline, lead led by the Holy Spirit. We, we studied about the pattern of Jesus that Jesus laid for us. Amen. And today I want to continue with the pattern that Jesus left for us. Amen. The pattern of Jesus, right? Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 onwards. What am I saying is that as long as an heir is under age, I'm reading from NIV, he is no different from a slave. Although he owns the whole estate, the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. Can everybody say, until the time, until the time. Set, by set by his father? So also, when we were under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your name. Thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us, O oh Lord. As I speak, let it not be me who speaks, but the Spirit of my Father speaking through me. Open the eyes of our heart and of our understanding. Give us the spirit of revelation and of wisdom. As I speak, let it not be me who speaks, but the Spirit of my Father speaking through me, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. This water is bad. Needs deliverance. Needs deliverance in that water. It's really bad. An heir, as long as he is an underage, he is no different from a slave. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, I told you. There's techno, right? And there's huyos. A child and a son. There is a difference between a child and a, a son or an heir. Only a son can become an heir. A child cannot become an heir. Now when Jesus was born, he was, the Bible says he was born of a woman under the law. one is born again. <laughs> Which one was that? Not saved. Jesus was born of a woman, fully human, came into this world, a child of God. The only difference was he was not of the seed of Adam. The only difference was he did not have the fallen nature in him. So when he was born, he was born as the second Adam, who was to become the life-giving spirit. 
God was setting a pattern for the future generations to come. Because the generations until Jesus were all failed and fallen. And there was no one worthy enough to bring sons to the Father. So Jesus now comes as a pattern son. Everybody say pattern son. He comes as a mold, as a model. Have you, uh, do you know how, what, a, what is a dye? You, you know what's, a, you know in your engineering you have a dye, right? You make those things, you have a dye, you pour it, and then you get the same shape. Right? When you make a dye cast, is it, is it called a dye cast or a dye? Yeah. A mold, a mold, yeah. So the, the, the mold, right, you make it into a shape and then you pour it, the metal or whatever, into it. And then it takes the shape of the, of what is it called again? The mold. It takes the shape. And then you replicate it. And then everyone looks the same. Jesus was the model son that came into this world to model sonship. Right from his birth to his childhood to his baptism unto his cross and resurrection and his continuing reign right now. We can see our life through the life of Jesus. And when you see your life through the life of Jesus, you will have a pattern by which you live. Say this with me. Jesus, Jesus. is the pattern son. Okay? Which I follow. Right? You need to follow. So your eyes must now open to every single event that happened to Jesus. Every single event that happened to Jesus, when your eyes open to that, you become conscious of how you must live. Amen. As he is, so are we in this world. We say that very easily. We quote that scripture, we say that scripture, but the church doesn't know how to walk like Jesus yet. How to behave like Jesus. We're still talking about, you know, what would Jesus do? It's not about what would Jesus do. What is Jesus doing right now? How connected are you to him? How intimate are you to him? So that you can follow the pattern of the pattern son. The original son. Amen. The second Adam. The first Adam was created after God's own image. The spirit of Adam was created in the image of God. But yet sin entered, death entered. Separation came. Therefore spiritual death and calamities followed. The moment man was disconnected from the father he was disconnected from nature when he was disconnected from nature he was no longer in charge of what was around in this world when he stopped being in charge of this world this world went into chaos yeah why do we have storms because humans aren't taking the rightful place of authority why is the diseases and sickness because we are not casting them out. Are you with me? We are allowing the spirit of the world, the spirit of Antichrist, with, uh, the, the spirit of sickness, the spirit of death to take control and run a rampage while we're sitting and waiting to go to heaven. While we, as sons of God, must walk towards sonship and manifestation and do the things that God has called us to do. Hallelujah. He has called us to follow the pattern son so we can be Christ on earth. He has called us to follow the pattern son so that we can continue the ministry of Jesus on earth. Amen. Don't worry if he cries a little bit. You can go inside the room if you feel uncomfortable, but no worries. He's, he's being a good boy. He's just praising God. So, he's, he's been more responsible, responsible than you guys, so at least I feel. <laughs> Can I get some response today? Amen. Amen. I want to get some response. So, Jesus is the pattern son. Everybody say, Jesus, Jesus is the pattern son. son. So, he's saying, what am I saying as long as an heir is underage? 
So there was a time that Jesus was underage. He was a child. He was not a son of God yet. He was what? A child. Sonship happens at his baptism. Before the baptism of Jesus, he was not yet what? The son. He was still a child. A baby in a manger. When Jesus was born in a manger, imagine the son left the realm of glory. Yeah? The realm of creator and comes and he's born in a humble manger. His beginnings were humble. His beginnings were small. Thank God for small beginnings. Hallelujah. Thank God for humble beginnings. Amen. Thank God for the times when you felt like you were in a stinky manger. Amen. Thank God for the times you worked in that factory. Thank God for times you were smelling of kebab. Thank God for the times when you fell down on that field because you were tired of riding that bicycle. Thank God for the time that you were working in that retail store. Thank God for the time that you fell off the bike doing Uber delivery. Thank God for the time that you rode your bicycle to the factory and you were tired of your life and you're wondering when things are going to change. Thank God for the manger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus himself was born in the manger. Amen. Everybody say, I'm following the pattern, son. I'm following the pattern. Then what happens? He's now growing. He's helpless. He's still depending on his parents and the Holy Spirit and the angels to keep him protected from Herod. The creator. At the mercy of a, another human to take care of him and protect him. His mother had to feed him. His mother had to raise him. His mother had to teach him. His mother was reading to him. He learned how to speak from his mother and father. You think Jesus when he was born, he said, yes, I am the son of God, hello. <laughs> no. He was a helpless what? Baby. He didn't have long hair and he said, I am the son of God, you worship me, Mary. No, nothing like that. Mary was like, you, you boy, listen to me. You are a child. You are my child. You are under my care, my responsibility. I'm pretty sure Mary and Joseph maybe had servants who took care of Jesus while he was growing up. And Mary maybe told them, he's a special child. He's a special child. This was a prophetic word about him. And maybe those around him knew those things. Maybe some took it seriously. Maybe some didn't. And Jesus was growing up in that environment. Hallelujah. But yet, the sonship was not given to him yet. The estate was not given to him yet. He had to go through what? Maturity. He had to go through the, 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 the whatever life had to give to his. He probably had brothers and sisters. And he, was, he had brothers and sisters. Jesus had brothers and sisters in this world. Yeah? Those are the brothers who came to him and said, come, let's go to the festival and you reveal yourself. They were there. They might have doubted him. They might have believed in him. But we see that Jesus is growing up as any normal human being. Hallelujah. But there was something different about him. He was a good child. He was an obedient child. And he knew the word. And he knew his father. And even at a, a young age of 12, he's saying, do you not know that I must be about my father's house? He knew what he had to do. So while growing up, his mother would have told him, this is the prophetic this was how the angel came and said. And while he was reading the book of Isaiah, he probably came to the place where it was written about him. And he would have received a revelation. And he said, the Bible is talking about me. The scripture is pointing towards me. There was something within him, the Holy Spirit, uh, that was prompting him and giving him revelation that he was indeed the son of the living God. Hallelujah. But he had to go through Hoyotisya. Hallelujah. He had to go through Hoyotisya. Men, the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. Now, what is the aim of life? What is the aim of the church? We're going towards sonship, right? We're going towards it. But please, let me explain something to you. This sonship you're going towards is not something that you decide when it happens. 
it is a time set by the the what does the Bible say? Time set by the the Father. You can't decide. I read the Bible ten times, so I'm mature already. I went to Bible school, so I'm mature already. I no, no, no. What is it? It is a time set by the Father. Jesus. Now, why am I talking about Jesus? Because when I talk about Jesus, you follow the simply follow the pattern. Everybody say, I simply follow the pattern son. Okay? He is the pattern son. Now, God wants his son to be manifested on earth. Okay? But this son is not a singular person. This son is not Jesus coming on earth and then everybody getting saved because they see this Jesus. Let me explain something to you. There are people in this world who will never read the Bible. There are people in this world who will never hear about Jesus. But they will know Jesus through you. Because Christ in you is the hope of what? Of glory. God's glory will be revealed on earth when sons and daughters of God begin to manifest into sonship and manifest Christ on earth. Amen? What is the plan of God? While the whole church is waiting for the physical return of Jesus, God is waiting for sons and daughters on earth to manifest Christ. If we don't manifest Christ, what's the point of waiting for a physical return of Jesus? If we don't walk in His glory, and if we as a church don't reveal His glory to the earth, what's the point of going to heaven? You were not just created for heaven, you were created to bring heaven on earth. And what is heaven on earth? It is bringing the presence of the Father to earth. What is heaven on earth? It is revealing Jesus to your place of work, to your place of family, in your place of worship, in the place of your community. It is revealing Jesus. Amen. And that's the whole point of sonship. Now look at Jesus. He's patiently waiting until 30 years old before he walks into Huyotisia or adoption as son. Amen. He's patiently waiting. Hallelujah. Verse 4. If you, uh, Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. Are you there? But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive what? The adoption to sonship. So, he had to redeem us from the law, so that what? We might be adopted into sonship. We might experience the huyotisia. But before we experience the huyotisia, who experienced it first? Who experienced it first? Jesus. Jesus experienced the adoption first. Why did he have to go through adoption? Why did he have to go through the huyotisia at the river Jordan? Why? Thank you. Why did he have to go through? Say this to me, he was setting the pattern. He was setting the pattern. He was making the mold. For us to follow. Are you with me? He was setting the pattern for us to follow. The way he was raised up, the way he submitted to his parents, the way he comes and says, whatever my father says, I say, whatever I, he does, I do. He was completely and submitted 100% to the father. His life was a life of total submission and surrender to the father. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Can somebody read Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Though he was a son, he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. 
He learns obedience. What does he say? He learns. Everybody say the pattern son. The pattern he learns obedience. One of the things that you will have to go through as a believer, if you want to go through adoption, is to learn. Can I hear you say? Obedience. Learn obedience. If you don't learn obedience by the leading of the Holy Spirit, forget about adoption. You'll just live a normal life. You'll just live a life that is everybody else is living. The Bible talks about sheep and goat. The sheep hear my voice. The goat doesn't listen. The goat will climb the rocks, the mountain, and he'll find his own way. Every time in church, you will see there are some goats. The goats, they have their own path. The sheep wait for their master to come open the door. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd, what? He opens the door and then he leads them beside the still. He restores their soul. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want or any lack. He leadeth me beside still waters. I lay down on these green pastures and he restoreth my soul. There's a sheep. The sheep learn obedience. The sheep learn obedience. The sheep learn how to <coughs> hear the master's voice. You see, in this world today, they compare sheep to be people who blindly follow. That's not the case. In the Bible, the sheep, you hear the master's voice and you follow because of trust. Can you say trusting the master's voice? Trusting the master's voice. See, now they are saying sheep, sheep, you know, don't be like a sheep following everybody else, right? But what they miss is that the same sheep say I'm a sheep because Jesus was the lamb that was slain right so you you he learns obedience through suffering so he came as a lamb right he came as a lamb but he's also what the lion of the tribe of Judah the problem is people don't understand that as a believer, you have dual nature. One is a lamb. lamb, a sheep, a lamb that hears the master's voice. A lamb that is ready to give his life for his family and friends. A lamb that is ready to sacrifice for God's work and ministry. But you are also what? Have the nature of Jesus, which is what? The lion of the tribe of Judah. That's where your bonus comes in. That's where your, 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 your dominion power comes in. Your authority comes in. That's where you take and walk in rulership like Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus, you see that dual nature. You see the lamb, the sheep that was come to set, to set his life for his people. But he was also the same Jesus who will take a whip and whip everybody and chase them out of that temple for making it a den of thieves hallelujah he gave himself up on the cross as a lamb that was sacrificed but he also is the lion of the tribe of judah hallelujah praise the lord so jesus really set the pattern so in the body of christ you will always see sheep and goats sheep hear the father's voice the sheep lay down their lives for the father the sheep are willing to go where the Father leads them. The rod and the staff of God, they what? Comfort us. We know God provides for us. God takes care of us. But you cannot be a sheep all the time. Amen. Say to me, I cannot be a sheep all the time. You need to know when you need to flip and become a lion. Amen. You need to know when you have to. You cannot be a sheep uh, when the wolf comes. I send you as sheep among wolves. See, when the wolf comes, you have to become a lion now. Are you with me? Um. See, that, that's where they miss. They think, we are sheep among wolves. Yes, you are sheep among wolves, but you are forgetting the fact that sheep turns around and become a lion. 
the wolf comes at you i'm going to pounce at you and kill you and and i'm going to take what's yours you say but don't you forget that i am the I, the line of the tribe of judah is within me hallelujah that's where you have to flip around and say greater is he than he who is in the world the wolf thinks aha uh -huh, nice dinner sheep he comes close to you the wolf becomes the dinner are you with me you got to understand this truth you have to follow your pattern son who is what jesus, jesus. if we just simply follow who he is and understand the pattern we can just live life blissfully hallelujah so the sheep they hear the voice and they want to follow so the goats they don't want to follow so now the goats that's a different story goats are a different story okay the goats they don't want to hear they don't want to hear no matter how much you preach to them no matter how much you tell them there are some people who will never listen they never listen this harden the heart harden 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 some goats they will convert and become sheep some goats they will not they'll just become goats this is the main that but now the sheep also they need to grow the sheep also need to what mature amen and understand the different facets of Jesus. Jesus is multifaceted. There are different sides to him. There are different elements to him that you have to understand. That's what John, what in the book of Revelation, the Bible says, and he was taken up into the heavens and he had a revelation, right, John? And multiple things are happening around him. And he's seeing the revelation of Jesus given to him, and it is multifaceted. Hallelujah. He sees Jesus. He sees wisdom. He sees glory. He sees Jesus as the wisdom of God. If you read the book of Proverbs, you see Jesus as the wisdom of God. Wisdom what? Cries out. When you read the book of Proverbs, the, when, you, when you read the wisdom chapters, uh, it's talking about Jesus, the word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Throughout the Old Testament, there are places and indications pointing towards Jesus. But they're not pointing directly towards Jesus, they're pointing towards the word. Amen? They were pointing towards the word. That word embodied itself into a human body who we call what? Jesus. Now we can touch, feel, and say, I know the word. That's why Peter said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which we have felt and dealt with, the word of truth. Before Jesus, people could not touch, feel, and understand the word. They only had the law. But when Jesus came, the Father took all the wisdom of himself and put it inside of the body that we call Jesus. Jesus the man and on the day that he was baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him, he became the Christ. The anointing or the spirit. Christ is the spirit. Christ is the anointing. Jesus the man or the pattern son i'm never getting the revelation today amen jesus the pattern son he's like every one of us but what made him the son of god was the anointing that came upon him what makes you and i exactly like jesus when we are born again his finished work on the cross redeemed us right the coming of the Holy Spirit transformed us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And when the Holy Spirit came upon you, you became exactly like Jesus. When the Holy Spirit came upon you, you became Christ on earth. So God is not really waiting to send a physical embodiment of Jesus to earth again. He's waiting for the whole body of... See, when you say body of Christ, body of Christ is not an organization. It is literally his body. 
in the realm, if you wear spiritual glasses and see right now, all of us, we will be a cell in the body. I am one cell. You are one cell. You are one part. You are probably part of the hand. You are probably part of the nose. You are probably part of the, this, you know, and you are probably part of some, you know, that, yeah. No, I don't know who is in the backside. So you're from every part, every part. Are you with me? <laughs> you're every, of course, Jesus has to sit down, man, sometimes. And so, yeah, every part is there. Hallelujah. Simeon, are you? <laughs> That's why you like squash you. <laughs> every time you want to sit down, you squash you. So he, we are part of his body. Amen. But the head is Christ. Amen. The head is Jesus Christ. So, Father is forming in Christ one man. Everybody say, Father, Father. is forming in, Christ forming in Christ one man. One man. But it looks like this on earth. How does it look on earth? On earth it looks like many members. One body. Imagine every cell in your body they congregate together every Sunday and have a church meeting. Yes? The hand will come and meet. This hand will come and meet. You know? The stomach will come and meet. Every part of your body is coming and meeting in a church service on Sunday. That's how it is. But one body. Many churches. Many people. Many nationalities. But one body. So what is father doing? He's bringing everyone together into one body. Spiritually, when the father sees, he doesn't see different churches. He doesn't see denomination. He doesn't see Lutheran and this and that. No, no. What does he see? He sees one body. What is our goal? Our goal is to walk towards adoption, is to walk towards sonship. What the father wants is that when we come into sonship, we start manifesting like Jesus Christ. Amen? The pattern son. But when we are a child, the human nature kicks in. We want to what? Rebel. We want to lie, steal, kick, break, uh, throw tantrums. Some of us are still throwing tantrums in a different form. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're growing up. The human nature. Then what happens? Why do we discipline the child? To get that human nature under control. Why do we teach the word of God? So that the pattern of the world does not enter into the child. So that the human nature is not manifesting. So that Christ's nature will come upon the child. And will one day go and walk into adoption or maturity or sonship. You getting me? So there is a war that is waging. What is that? One side evil, one side the world, one side the, the, the Satan and his demons want to take the mind of that human and corrupt it and take it far away from adoption. Because Satan knows if the church comes into adoption, he's in big trouble. The plans of God will fulfill. But it is going to fulfill. It is already fulfilled. We just have to manifest it. It is just a matter of time. Amen. So there is a war going on, but you don't look at the war. Don't look at conspiracies. Don't look at what's going wrong in the world. What is our focus as a church? Adoption. Can we say adoption? adoption. What are we walking into? Adoption. What is adoption? What is a Greek, what is a Greek word for adoption? Can we all say it? Yes. Yes. Or if we all say it again? Who your Tisia? Everybody say who your Tisia. Meaning adoption as sons. Mature presentation of a mature son. So the child, the servants know one day this child will be the head of the family. One day this child will own the estate of his father. So all the slaves and all the servants and all the people in the community will look at the child and say, grow in obedience. Grow in maturity. Stay humble. 
Hallelujah. When you come to church, why do you submit to a leadership? Why do you submit to your spiritual parents? Why do you submit and learn? Because you're saying, what are you saying? I want to reach for your tizia. You're a child, but not yet given to you. The estate and authority and dominion has not yet been given to you. It will only be given when you submit, surrender, and walk and learn obedience. Everybody say learn obedience. Learn obedience. Because who learned obedience? Jesus. Jesus learned obedience. Amen. And we see the pattern son going through the patterns and the systematically he's going through things. Right? And then what happens? He goes to the cross and he dies. The only thing that you don't have to do ever again is go to the cross and die. Why? Because when he died, you died. The only thing is, he is the creator. The Bible says, in him, all things that are made, are made. So everything in this physical universe came out of who? Out of who? Out of the word. The word of God. The everything, everything in the physical universe came from the word of God. Everything that was created, that word became flesh. So which means <laughs> that baby that was born, the whole physical universe came from him. Right? So when that baby died, when the baby grew into sonship, and the father said, this is my son, in whom I am well pleased. When you walk into maturity, you will never have to announce you are mature. There are some people who like to tell I'm more mature. Let the Father put the seal of approval. Hallelujah. You don't have to share you are mature. You don't have to tell that you are more mature. You don't have to tell that you are more spiritual. The Father says, the voice from heaven says, and said what? This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Let me tell you something. When you reach who your thesis, you know what will happen? Prophets will begin to identify you. I'm telling you. When you're sitting in a meeting somewhere, a prophetic person, if there is there, they will see you and they will identify you and they will bless you. I'm not talking about the identifying where you say you made a sin last day. No, that's not. A, I'm talking about this is what God has for you. A prophetic meaning and a message that will be given to you. There's a difference. Okay. Oh, God, point me out. And the prophet comes and says, you, I know where you were last night. <laughs> I'm not that type of prophetic pointing. I'm talking about, if you are sitting in a meeting and, 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 and the word of the Lord will come to you. It will just come as it is for you. You go to another meeting. It will same thing happen again. You will see patterns happening. Wherever Jesus went, they were recognizing the anointing and the presence in his life. He stayed humble. Hallelujah. The prophetic will begin to point you out. When you start in that direction, the whole of the spiritual realm will begin to recognize you as a potential son going. Heaven gets excited. Angels get excited. My God. That, your angel will say, hey boys, look, that's my, that's my boy. I'm in charge of that girl. I'm in charge of him. Look, he's going towards adoption. Are you? Why? Come, come, come back, come back, you know? Sometimes they'll face palm. Sometimes they'll be like, yay. Hmm? Wing palm. So, <clears throat> please forgive me. You'll put him in the back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> heaven rejoices because what? This son or this daughter has finally realized who she's called to be. Not just existing to be a Christian, but existing and living to be Christ on earth. Walking towards maturity, walking towards adoption. Because once you come into adoption, you begin to change lives. When you come into adoption, suddenly your life has light and people who come in contact with you are blessed. Amen. Amen. Suddenly, the words you speak at your workplace, huh? This guy suddenly spoke speaking wisdom. They didn't notice you. They didn't care much about you. But they didn't begin to notice there's something different about you. 
Hallelujah. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He takes you through the adoption. Hallelujah. Jesus, the pattern son. So in him, all things were made that were made. Amen. So when he died, we died. When he was buried, we were buried. When he was resurrected, we were resurrected. Now, the father sent the son so he can create in Christ and through Christ a new creation. A new creation. creation. What are you then? You are a new creation. So now this new creation, you're born. Right? You are, you're not born again through Christ. You're a new creation. A new person. The old has gone, the new has. Therefore, if any man is in what? In Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. The seal of the Holy Spirit has been stamped upon you. The seal of approval. The mark of Jesus Christ is on your body. So whole heaven is waiting. What is this guy going to do? Whole of heavenly hosts will wait. Okay, Simeon got saved. What's he going to do? Is he going to dig deep into his spirit and find out what his talents are? What his calling is? Or will he sit in that office day and night and waste away the call that God has put in his life? Oh wait, he's taking his Bible, he's reading. Oh wait, he's praying in tongues. Oh wait, the light is glowing more. Oh wait, God is speaking to him. Oh wait, he's going to that church. Oh wait, his mind is enlightened. Oh, glory be to God, he's going towards adoption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What is happening? You're exposing yourself more and more to the word, to the presence. Your mind is being transformed. Your, your spirit is being re-energized and recalibrated. Things are being shifted in your spirit so that God is aligning you with his plans and his purposes. Amen. In your own childlike uh, 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 tantrums, you want to do your things. Uh, but the Holy Spirit was teaching you obedience through suffering. You are suffered. Why? Because you choose to let go of things. Uh, let go of your own mindset and ambition. And you said, God, not my will, but your will be done. I am following the pattern of Jesus Christ, not following my own plans, not following my own purposes, but I'm following the plans of God. Oh, this body may be weak, but my spirit is strong. I'm looking towards Zion. I'm walking towards Mount Zion. I'm walking the mountain of God. I'm going towards the presence of God. Oh, there may be things that will pull me down. There may be things that push me down. There may be things that, uh, that, that disappoint me and discourage me, but God is my strength. God is my savior. The angelic forces are sent to encourage you. The Bible says after Jesus overcome the devil in the, in the wilderness, angels came to minister to him. I prophesy the angels will come to minister to you when you overcome, when you go through the turmoil, when you go through the trouble sometimes, angels of God will come to minister to you. They will come strength to you. I speak strength to you no matter what you're going through in life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Jesus, the pattern son that we follow. Hallelujah. I was born and raised for such a time as this. Don't look at your weakness, says the Lord. Don't look at the shortcomings in your life, says the Lord. Don't look at the sin in your life, says the Lord. There is a life that I have for you. There is a pattern that I have for you. I am taking you towards Mount Zion. I am fulfilling the purposes and plans for your life, says the Lord. Everything that God has to do and accomplish in your life, you will do it. You will accomplish it in the mighty name of Jesus. I see God restoring wasted years. Everything the locusts have eaten, God restoring to you in the name of Jesus. You are thinking, God, when will my vision come to pass? When will my call happen? It's happening this year, says the Lord. It is settled. You are going towards adoption. You are going towards maturity. It is settled. It is settled. It is settled in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's turn to our feet. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Mandagedelebroshatagabani. Sing it. Lelelebosi kadabosha talaba. 
Come on, lift up your voice and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Lord, come on, lift up your voice and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Begin to pray in tongues right now. Father, we pray, Lord, that your purposes, your plans uh, will be accomplished in my life. Uh, no plans of the enemy will come against me. In the name of Jesus, every arrow, every deception, I command them to just break away and go the opposite direction. In the name of Jesus, I see favor coming upon your life. I see, I see increase coming upon your life. In the name of Jesus, Legosi imazoto lobrena mashaga di lebrona masato rosa katava di lebre. Robin, I saw there was an increase. I see a financial increase coming to you not very long from now you will see a breakthrough in finances in the name of jesus i even see a breakthrough for your father there are some things that he been struggling with but the lord asked me to tell you that your father is going to have a breakthrough and you're going to receive a news of breakthrough very soon in the name of jesus it's a season of change. It's a season of increase. It's a season that you're going to you're going to walk in authority and power. That you're going to fulfill things you thought you never could do before. I call you forth right now in the name of Jesus. We lift you high, 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 for you are
hasn't been a vision. I saw your entire family in a long table, and I saw you at the head, and I saw God restoring some things in your family. I saw God restoring your honor. I saw God restoring your place. And they're listening to your testimony. They're listening to what God is doing in your life. And God is honoring you in their midst. And I speak that over your life. Becoming like an anchor of faith. I even see your children, some of them are calling you. You said that okay for us. Then you should pray. They begin to see the grace of God upon your life. But there really is a grace upon you. There really is a grace upon you right now. God is not forgotten. Lord, we glorify your name. <clears throat> All we need is you, Lord. All we need is you. You alone are enough for us, Jesus. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us for now and forevermore.